All right, time now for us to uh, have our weekly doctor visit, and that means it's time for us to talk with Dr. Stan Anderson. He's on our WHBC Newsline. Good morning, Dr. Stan. Hey, Pam. Great to talk to you. I am very interested in hearing about this study. I think this is very, very important, this study on dementia. And the fact that you wrote and said that it was uh, the most comprehensive, I think that's pretty important too, right? Yeah, so this was uh, done in the United Kingdom, and they were looking at almost uh, 400,000 people that were under the age of 65. And what they were doing was they were looking at why some people get young or early onset dementia with the idea that it would also end up being uh, corroborative uh, for people that develop dementia later on in life in their 70s and 80s and 90s. And so it was really, really fascinating. Um, everything that they ended up coming up with are things that have been kind of pointed out to, but the more and more they looked at it, they said, yes, these are the biggest ones. One of the biggest was social isolation, low economic status. Those were the two biggest things. So p poor people who are alone are the people that have one of the highest risk. If they have a hearing loss and they don't do anything about it, uh, if they've had a previous stroke or if they have diabetes or heart disease or depression, all of those were clearly some of the highest risk that they would end up developing young onset dementia. And then what they found as far as um, things inside you, vitamin D deficiency, and if you had inflammation, so the marker that they used was something called a C-reactive protein. Um, that increases the risk as well as then they were looking at genetics. Now, we don't have a definitive genetic uh, DNA, but there is an APOE4 gene variant um, that that's been kind of linked towards um, uh, Alzheimer's in the past. But people that ended up having that particular DNA, if they had uh, an APOE4, um, which is a test that can be tested for now, a little bit pricey, but it is something that can be done, that also increased your risk. Now, as far as lifestyle and things, um, people with formal education, so people that have graduated, people that have been trying to stay more active, they are the ones that um, uh, had lower risk. Uh, people that were more frail, and they measure this with what's called a hand grip strength. And what that found was that also ended up having an issue. Um, and then um, people with certain mental health problems, so chronic stress, depression, obviously loneliness from being alone. And what that does is none of these things individually were a, a telling risk factor. But when they looked at the entire group, if you had more than eight of those, your risk for developing dementia dramatically, dramatically increased. Now, this was just published in the JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association, Neurology. <clears throat> and what that does is that gives us a pretty good way of being able to talk to people to say, if you have a family history, if there's a risk, if you've been having some brain fog or some memory issues that are just concerning, or you're just having a little bit harder time getting things together, you may want to talk to your healthcare provider about whether or not you have uh, some blood test abnormalities. Um, are you at risk? Uh, are you managing your medical problems? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you getting exercise? So those are all of the things that play a role, and it makes a big difference as far as really Taking care of yourself is one of the one of the things that oftentimes so many people end up being responsible for people around them that they don't take care of themselves. Or we just get kind of into this pattern. We just get kind of stuck into this 
yeah, this is what I've always done, or it's a lot easier for me just to wake up and to turn on whatever device I have and just kind of sit there and be entertained by it. One of the things is the more active you are, the more that you take control, the more that you have a plan of what is right for me, and you start to be more actively involved in making the world a better place. And ultimately, um, there is so much bad that's going on in the world, it's, it's really kind of depressing that whenever you hear the news, all you hear is this bad person did that and this conflict over there and these people don't like those people and all this death and famine and disaster. And it's pretty overwhelming. And one of the best things you can do to prevent dementia, to prevent the bad things from happening to you is sometimes you have to shut down some of the excess news and focus on what can I do to make my part of the world a better place? What can I do to help the people that I love, to help the people that I'm around, whether it's taking care of one of your neighbors and just doing something because it needs to be helped, or if you see somebody who might be a stranger that's having a little bit of a problem, some other things have fallen, just helping other people that is one of the things that our world needs so desperately right now. Yeah. Kindness doesn't cost you anything. That's what we, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. and it's funny, Dr. Stan, I just started doing this almost uh, like around the new year. And I kept saying positivity, we're going to start the day with positivity. You know, as, start, as, as soon as I started complaining about something on the radio, then I, caught myself no we're gonna we're gonna start the day with positivity and i think that's i think that's a good thing i think people need to you know remember that and honestly the things that you listed um you know that's just another reason to try to you know do the things to stay healthy is to fight off dementia yeah especially since some of the social isolation issues and loneliness and being alone and not being around other people That's one of the major factors for developing dementia. So really building that network, really doing things for people um, that are strangers, just random acts of kindness, those are the things. Being more positive, being more optimistic, those are the things that are going to make a big difference, not only in other people that you're helping, but in your own life, in your own world, it makes a huge impact. Well, I am positive that we will talk to you next Wednesday, (laughs) sir. Okay? (laughs) I love it. I love it. All right. Thank you, Dr. Stan. Pam, always great to talk to you. Ken's Morning News with Pam.